I believe that image is never a constant. Image is an ever-changing variable. And I want to illustrate that with a little story. I decided years ago I would give the Marriott Corporation the number one ranking because I like Marriott's. They're first class in so many ways and they're fewer surprises. And I give them about a 9.5 on a 10 scale. You agree that's pretty good on a 10 scale? Willingness to recommend for them? I talk about them all the time. So they're a 9.5. Now go with me in your imagination. I check into the Marriott Windwatch Hotel in Long Island, New York. I arrive at 1 a.m. because I've had a long day of travel and I go to the front desk to check in. And I got these heavy bags, and I, I give her my credit card, and the paperwork is being done. You know the drill. And I fill it out, and she said, yes, Mr. Hudson, we, uh, we're expecting you. We have room number 900 blocked for you. And I said, great. Here's your plastic key card. And I said, well, that's fine and good, but uh, what I'd really like to know is do you have a bellman who can help me with these heavy bags? I've had a long day of travel. She said, I'm sorry, sir. All our bellmen go home at midnight. Marriott comes down from a 9.5 to a 9.0. Image is never a constant. Image is an ever-changing variable. I said, no problem. Uh, I carry my bags most of the time anyway. I'll get them tonight. I grab my bags, and I go get on the elevator. And I punch 9 on my way up to room number 900, and it occurs to me as I'm going up to 900 that room number 900 is either going to be right next to the elevator or all the way down at the end of that long corridor in that gigantic hotel. The ninth floor... The door's open. I step off. There's a number on the first door, 988. I know 900's a long ways away, and I start hiking, and you guessed it. It's the very last room down at the end of the corridor in that big hotel. I get to 900, and I pull my plastic key card out of the pocket, and I stick it in the groove in the door. Some of you are ahead of me now. <laughs> it didn't work. I turned it around, and I tried it, and it didn't work. I turned it over, and I tried it, and it didn't work. It's obvious to me I've got to go back down to the front desk. And I look down at those two heavy bags. Well, I'm in Long Island, New York. You going to leave them or you going to take them? <laughs> I'm not even happy about making the decision. And Marriott's image is down from about a 9.0 to an 8.5 down to an 8.0. Their image is suffering. Well, I don't hear or see anybody anywhere. I decide to gamble. I leave the bags there. I hike back down to the elevator, down to the lobby level, over to the front desk. I said, ma'am, this piece of plastic will not get me in room number 900. She said... I'm sorry, sir, sometimes that happens. Not exactly what I wanted to hear. Marriott, meanwhile, is down to about a 7.5. I said, ma'am, what can you do to help me? I'm awfully tired. I need to get in my room. She said, sir, you go back up to room number 900. I'll have the engineer meet you there. He'll get you right in. I said, I'll go back up there, but you better promise me he's coming. She said, he'll be there momentarily. I get back on the elevator, back up to the ninth floor. Hike back down to room number 900. I get there, and the good news is... My bags are still there. The bad news is the engineer isn't. And with that, it's now like 1.30 in the morning. I'm so weary. I lean against the door facing, and I fall asleep standing up, waiting on that engineer. New experience. And I waited on that engineer for five hours. Well, it seemed like five hours. <laughs> You know, they say in customer service, uh, minutes like an hour sometimes. It's really only five minutes, but I did fall asleep, and the whole story's true but that one line, so cut me a little slack on that one. I was, um, momentarily, I was awakened by a guy with a bunch of tools rattling off his belt. I looked at him, he looked at me, he said, hey, you must be the guy who wants to get in room number 900. I said, yeah, you must be Sherlock Holmes to figure that out. <laughs> He said, I'm going to get you right in there, sir. And he keyed me a new card, got me right in. I'm asleep in two minutes. The next morning, I woke up early. I always do. I went over and I pulled the draperies back and I look at that beautiful setting at that incredible hotel overlooking the Atlantic and there's a golf course and weeping willow trees. Spectacular. I thought, wow, and I don't speak for IBM until 11 o'clock this morning. I'm going to sit at this desk with this view and I'm going to put a few thoughts on paper today. And with that, I went to my briefcase to get a legal pad. No legal pad. I guess I left it on the airplane or something. I thought, hey, no problem. Uh, I'd already called room service for coffee. I'm thinking I'll throw on a jogging suit. I'll go to the lobby level, and I'll get me a legal pad. I'll be back up before room service even gets here. So I throw on a jogging suit down to the lobby, over to the sundry shop, which was closed. Marriott's down to a six and a half. I go to the front desk. I said, ma'am, do you have a legal pad? She said, we don't have any legal pads at the front desk. She said, but if you go through those glass doors over there where it says sales and catering, I think somebody might be able to help you. I said, thank you, ma'am. I go through the glass doors. I'm greeted by a Marriott professional, freshly pressed suit, 
pleasant smile, a real pro. Marriott's already bumping back up to a seven, seven and a half. He said, yes, sir, may I be of service? I said, you certainly can. I'm Hudson in room number 900, and I need a legal pad in the worst way. The lady at the front desk said, you might be able to help me. Sundry shop is closed. He said, I think I can. Stand by just a moment. He disappears down the corridor. He's back in about 13 seconds flat. He said, Mr. Hudson, I've got... Mr. Hudson? One quick exposure? This guy remembers my name? Somebody said, that's your most prized possession. Wow, Marriott's back up to an eight. He said, Mr. Hudson, I've got an eight and a half by 11, an eight and a half by 14. You want this one, this one, or both of them? I said, I'll take that one. How much do I owe you? He said, you got it, and it's on the house. Well, you know I love a deal. Marriott's back to a 9.0. Well, I went up and did a little writing, and a little later I came down to give my speech, and I had the Marriott pros there right on the spot. I needed a table at the last minute. They gave me everything I needed. I had lunch with the client served by the Marriott professionals. It was a great experience. And by the time I checked out at 1 o'clock that day, Marriott's image was right back up to a 9.5. What do I want you to remember from this story? The image of an organization, the image of the service you provide, the image of you personally. It's never a constant. It's an ever-changing variable, which means what we need to do every single day is give it our best shot every day. And if we give it our best shot, we're going to keep that image rating high. And if we do that, we're going to enjoy greater success.